Welcome to another episode of Jamming with Jason. Hey, in today's episode, we are going to be talking about how to assess the value of learning opportunities. And this came up this week. I was having some interaction with some people on LinkedIn uh, about different learning opportunities. And the reason we're talking about it, so many people are still under the mindset of looking at a cost per hour as they're looking for different learning opportunities. And I'm here to tell you folks, that's really an outdated and broken model. And we're going to talk about why in this episode, and I'm going to give you some ways that you can start assessing in a different way that will actually provide you with much more value. So let's roll that episode. Hi, I'm Jason Mefford, and you're in the right place to start transforming your career and life with this podcast. I've been in the trenches as an executive leader, and now I'm an executive coach and confidential advisor to executives all over the world. I use a multidisciplinary approach to improve learning that drives transformation by getting to the root cause in a practical, no-nonsense way. I love learning and sharing what makes people tick. You get both education and entertainment, since learning shouldn't be boring, right? But that's enough about me. This podcast is a combination of intuitive leadership, neural influence, and mental mastery to take your career and life to levels you've never thought possible. If you're wanting to improve yourself, develop stronger relationships professionally and personally, make quicker, better decisions, and become a more effective leader, then of course, this podcast is for you because you are going to learn how to manage emotions in yourself and others, avoid burnout, stress, and anxiety, master your mind, get people to listen and take action, and become a lifelong learner. And when you do that, you will have a positive mental attitude, executive leadership presence, and the skills to know exactly what to say and do in any situation. I'm glad you're here. So let's get started. All right. Well, today we're going to talk about something that I'm actually very passionate about. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to see that as we go through this. Um, but the reason why I want to talk about this today is that there are a lot of people that I've been talking to. I've been having some interaction with people uh, on LinkedIn. So as a reminder, if you haven't connected with me on LinkedIn, um, go ahead and do that uh, because I am active on that platform and, uh, and can communicate. Can, can communicate with you well on that platform. But as I said, I was having some interactions with people uh, uh, for, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, my friend Hal Guerin, who I've had on the podcast several times, um, did a poll and was asking people, hey, you know, for, for CPE training, how much do you, are you willing to pay? And I was actually very interested in the results of that. And I'm going to share that with you here in just a minute. Uh, but it got into a discussion with some people about, about training or what I'm calling learning opportunities in general. And I'm using the word learning opportunities for a reason, okay? Because we need to think about, uh, you know, most of the time when people think of training, they think of a formalized training. Uh, but there are different uh, learning opportunities that may or may not be a course or a training that you're going through. So I'm going to use a little bit more of a generic term on learning opportunities as we go through and talk about this. But as I said, a lot of people um, have been in the mindset, especially if you have a certification or some sort of license that requires you to get a certain number of training hours in the year, a lot of people are under the mistaken assumption that you should look at, right, how much it costs per hour uh, to be able to determine whether or not you're going to take that training. 
And because a lot of people treat this just as a compliance check the box sort of a mentality, there's a lot of people who don't want to pay at all for training. And we're going to go through and talk about that here in just a minute as well. Um, but as I said, from, from Hal's uh, initial survey, it hasn't closed yet, uh, but about 44% of people said, hey, I'm not willing to pay anything for CPE. I, I only want free. Now, that's a little disturbing in, okay, it's not a little disturbing. It's a lot disturbing. And here's the reason why. You know, as professionals, uh, really the capital and in, in an investment in ourself is what helps us to earn money over the life of our career. So the more educated you are, uh, the more trained you are, the more knowledge, skills, and competencies that you develop over your career, the more money you can actually make, right? And so again, some training, for example, when you get a certification, actually literally helps you earn a lot more money over the course of your career. And so training or learning opportunities should be viewed as an investment. Now, if you were to invest, let's say in the stock market, but you only invested in stocks that were free or stocks that people gave you for free, is that really how you would want to plan for your retirement? I'm guessing probably not, right? And so we don't want to use, you know, like I said, a, a broken model in thinking about your professional development, okay? And, and I'll tell you, you know, I, I quit doing free trainings and, and, and joining in on webinars and other things like that a while ago. It is very, very rare that I will attend any of these. And the reason? Because most of the time, the free stuff, people don't know what they're talking about, okay? And, and as I said, we're going to get in and we're going to talk a little bit more here um, about some of the ways that you can actually uh, um, think about and determine whether or not a learning opportunity is right for you, okay? And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a few uh, different, I've got a few bullet points here that I'm going to go through and talk about to help you in determining. So as I said, the, fir the first thing is CPE or training per hour cost is a bad way of trying to look at things, okay? Because again, that, that shows you nothing as far as the real value in what you're getting. And so again, let me give you an example. I told you that again, I, I personally do not do much free stuff anymore because honestly, it's pretty bad a lot of times. Now, uh, I'll give you a concrete example about this, okay? So again, I, I love the IIA, but I stopped going to my local chapter meetings quite a while ago. And, and, the, and the reason for that is, again, I was still paying to go, right? I was still paying 30 or 50 bucks to go, but the people who were providing the learning opportunities were not paid Okay, they were not paid by the local chapter. And so what you end up finding is when people don't get paid, they usually look for people who are willing to not get paid. Okay, now I'm here to tell you folks, and it shouldn't be a surprise, but the people with the most expertise, the people who know the most about different topics, they usually like to get paid for what they do. I know that might be a shocker to a lot of you that are out there, but just like you enjoy getting paid for doing your job, people who are experts and that share their knowledge as an instructor or a teacher, they appreciate getting paid as well. And so, you know, that's why most of the time I don't provide training for people that want to do it for free because I like to get paid, okay? So honestly, you won't see me show up at most IIA chapter meetings unless they're willing to pay, okay? Now, why, why is this a problem? You know, because again, you might be saying, well, now just a minute, right? Um, you know, just because somebody is willing to do it out of the goodness of their heart, it doesn't mean that it's not good quality content. And I agree, 
right? Again, just because somebody is, is doing it for free doesn't mean it's not good, but most of the time it's not. And again, here's a concrete example. <clears throat> I was at one of my local IIA meetings probably two or three years ago, and the topic was around risk management, okay? Something that I know a little bit about, right? And I remember there were, there, it was a co-presented uh, uh, discussion where there were two managers from a very large professional service firm. Now, this was not one of the big four, but it was one of the very large professional service firms. And I'm not going to tell you who, because I don't want to embarrass anybody. But again, two managers, I think one of them was a senior manager and the other one was a manager who was talking about risk management. And they were using, <coughs> excuse me, they were using some slides that the firm had prepared, you know, kind of like a canned slide deck uh, that they were using to talk about risk management. And I remember as we were going through and they were talking about it, it the, the topic came up obviously with risk management was around ISO 31000, which is an ISO standard about risk management. And I remember, you know, they were kind of just reading the slides that were given to them. And they got to one uh, where it was talking about uh, risk treatments or ways that you can respond to risk. And they both kind of read this and then they stopped and they looked at each other and they're like, I, I don't know if that's supposed to be on there. Because it was a, a bullet point talking about increasing the risk, choosing to increase the risk uh, instead of trying to reduce the risk. And both of them, as I said, they looked very confused uh, to which, you know, I kind of had to raise my hand and I'm like, guys, did you not read the standard? Because yes, ISO does have that as one of its risk response or risk treatment things is, hey, you may look at something and you say, you know what? We're okay to take a little bit more risk. We're okay to increase the risk. So the ISO standard actually talks about that. So again, for, for, for me, someone who actually knew it, it wasn't a big deal because I, I already knew it. But imagine the people who were sitting in that audience, you know, and without me kind of raising my hand and explaining it, they would have walked away not having the right information. And again, nothing against those two gentlemen that were presenting, but again, usually you're gonna get more value right, by listening to somebody who's an expert than somebody who is just kind of doing it, right, or doing it out of the goodness of their heart just because they like to do it, uh, or somebody who's training, you know, from a business development perspective. They're giving you a free training because they want something else out of you, okay, and that's, that's another side of it too. So, so as I told you, you know, looking at training and trying to decide, you know, is this a good training for me? And just looking at it and saying, oh, you know, that's $20 an hour or that's $100 an hour. Oh, that's too expensive. Get that out of your mind. Quit thinking of it in that way. Okay. It's an old model. It's broken. And again, you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. Okay. So let me go through now and just give you some examples of ways for you to start assessing the value of training to figure out if it's right for you. Because I said, don't look at it just because of the, the investment cost. Here's some other ways for you to think about. The first thing is treat learning opportunities just like you would any other investment, okay? Now, what that means is, again, look at what you're going to be investing and consider what you are getting out of that investment, okay? So if you spend $50 and it was a mindless, boring waste of your time, $50 was not a very good use of your time from an investment perspective, okay? Now, on the flip side, you could take a $2,000 course. And again, some people would say $2,000, that's a lot of money. I don't know that I can afford that. I don't know that it's worth it. But here's where I want you to stop and think about it from an investment perspective. 
if you take that $2,000 course, what do you get back in return for that investment? Now, a $2,000 course often will be something like a certification course from C-Risk Academy. So if you're investing $2,000, what are you getting? You're getting learning, but you're also getting a certification that you can add to your resume to LinkedIn as a result of that. Now, if that $2,000 course is going to help you get a promotion or get a new job to where you're maybe earning $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 a year more in salary, now all of a sudden when you look at it from an investment lens, Two thousand, you know, investing two thousand dollars to get back ten thousand dollars or more per year over the course of your career, that's a pretty good return on your investment. Okay, so the first way to think about it is treat it like an investment. Look at the value that you're going to be getting out of it, and is it worth you investing into that? Now, the second one that I want to talk about is what I call rent versus buy. And so again, you know, you can think about this from a real estate perspective or other things. It is usually cheaper to rent than it is to buy in the short run, okay? And so what I mean is you can probably rent a place to live for cheaper than you could buy a, a house or a condo or whatever and pay the mortgage. The mortgage is probably going to be a little bit higher than your rent would be. But in the long term, which of those benefits you the most, renting or buying? And so again, from an investment decision, most people look at it and realize, hey, if I buy it, then I'm gonna get the future appreciation as well. Eventually when I pay off the mortgage, I'm not gonna have that cash outflow each month. And so a lot of people choose to buy instead of renting. Now, you might be saying, how does this relate to training? Well, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret about this too. Attending live trainings or live learning opportunities, uh, like webinars, like in-person training, that is like renting that information because you show up at a particular time, you hear it, and then that's it. You don't get access to it anymore. You have effectively rented that time with the instructor, with whatever it is that you're doing. You've rented that time and you don't have that as an asset to be able to go back to, okay? Now, if you, if you contrast that with something like on-demand training where you actually have access to that resource for the rest of your career, it's convenient because you can do it at the time you want to. You can watch it, you can stop, you can rewind, you can think about it You know, six months from now and go, hold it, I remember that training I took, I wanna go back and look at that again. Well, on-demand training, again, C-Risk Academy offers that. Those kind of opportunities are like buying because it becomes a resource that you can use throughout your career. It's not rented. You can go back to it whenever you want to. And the more times you go back to it, the more value you're going to have in your career. Now, as I said, buying might be a little bit more expensive. So again, taking an on-demand course might be a little bit more than going to just a webinar. But which one is going to benefit you in the long term of your career? It's probably better, right, to end up you know, if, if this is something that you think you're going to use again, to pay a little bit more upfront to know that you can go back to it whenever you want to. <clears throat> now, I do this same thing. Every time my wife and I watch a movie, uh, we usually watch through our Apple TV. So uh, we have to decide, do I want to rent the movie or do I want to buy the movie? And again, you know, pricing, it varies for each one of them. But we look at it and say, you know what, if this is a movie that we think we're going to want to go back and watch again, I just buy the movie. 
I don't worry about renting it because usually renting it twice, you might as well have bought it anyway, okay? The same thing applies for training as well. So think about, is this something you only wanna hear once and you never wanna go back to? Okay, choose an option, a learning option that's like renting. But if it's something that you wanna be able to go back to, use as a resource for the rest of your career, it's probably better to pay a little bit more to actually have that resource throughout your career. Okay, so that's the second one. That's the second way of looking at value. Now, the third one that I'm gonna throw out there is just in general about value. And so again, I see this a lot of times. In fact, um, <laughs> I, have, I have three nephews. I have three nephews who are actually CPAs. And I remember talking to one of them and he was, he was talking about getting a CPE at the end of the year. And he signed up for some free thing. And after 15 minutes, he had to shut it off uh, because he just couldn't stand listening to it anymore and then had to go find something else. So it's, it's you know, again, are you getting value out of it? So again, don't sign up for training just to tick a box on your CPE form. Make sure that it's something that's actually valuable for you and for your career. Don't go listen to mind-numbing BS uh, that isn't going to help you. If you're going to invest your precious time, make sure it's on something that you think will actually help you in the long run. Now, when we're considering and thinking about that, again, it's the value to you. So for every person, that's going to be a little bit different. But let me give you an example as well. Let's say that I'm going to the grocery store to buy ground beef, okay? Ground beef is what we call it here in America, chopped up you know, beef. Uh, Australia, they call it minced meat. That's what my wife calls it. But let's pretend that we're going to the grocery store to buy some ground beef. Now, when I get there and I look in the store, I'm going to have a couple of different options. And again, this might vary depending on where you're at, but this is just kind of my experience here in the US. So we go there and we could find maybe that there is ground beef, regular, regular old ground beef sells for $3 a pound. But right next to it is organic grass-fed beef, ground beef, for maybe $5 a pound. So at this point, I have a decision to make, right? I have ground beef for $3 a pound. It was probably, you know, hormone-raised, uh, feedlot-fed beef for $3 a pound. Or I could do the organic grass-fed beef for $5 a pound. Now, for each person who's making that decision, there's going to be plenty of people who say, I just want the $3 beef. I want whatever's cheapest. I don't really care. So if you're one of those kind of people, then buy the $3 ground beef, okay? But if you're other people that look at it and say, you know what, this is something I'm putting in my body, and I'd rather not have the hormones from the, the animal in my body. I would rather maybe have, uh, you know, pay a little bit more for organic or farm raised or grass fed because I believe that it's going to do my body better. It's going to be better for my body. It's going to provide me with more value, right, in the long run. So to me, it might be worth paying the $5 per pound instead of the $3 per pound. You see the difference there? So again, that's the third way to think about it is what's, excuse me, what's the value to you? And so again, don't just pick the cheapest option. Look at, again, the other value that you're going to get from it. Okay, so that's three that we've gone through already. I've got a couple more and then we're gonna wrap out for today. So the first ones we talked about, treating it like an investment. Second one, considering it like a rent versus buy decision. Uh, the third one we talked about was value. Okay, so let's get into the fourth one now, which is the differences between a course and a program, okay? 
Now, again, this may be another little nuance that you might not be aware of, but let me just explain the difference between a course and a program, okay? A course is usually something that is discrete. You're buying a course that's five hours, 10 hours, 20 hours long, okay? It's about a particular topic and it is to provide you with knowledge or teach you certain skills, okay? That is what a learning opportunity that is a course does, right? So maybe it's how to write audit reports or you know how to raise orchids, okay? That, those would be a course where you're going in, you're actually getting some knowledge. They're gonna probably teach you some skills um, and that's it, right? So it's discrete, beginning, end. Now, again, those could be live, they could be on demand, those are courses, okay? There are courses, there are also what are called programs. So a program is different than a course, and this is how it is different. You know, the course teaches you usually knowledge and skills, but to really learn something, we need to develop competencies from those knowledge and skills, which means we have to exercise, we have to practice, we actually have to implement and do those things until we actually learn it. And we learn it by doing. So a program usually in, encourages people and provides opportunities for them to practice and learn along the way. So you're not just getting the knowledge and skills, but you're actually incorporating it into practice, you're exercising it, you are transforming and changing your life, okay? So an example of that might be the briefing leadership program that I do for leaders. Um, and the reason for that, again, you can go read a leadership book if you want to. There's lots of them that are out there. You can go take a leadership course and you'll learn things during it, but then it's up to you to actually implement it. And what we find is most people take the course and they do nothing else with it. And so again, courses are great. I love courses. I have lots of courses myself. I take courses myself as well as giving them. But if you really want transformation and you want to start applying those things and exercising and gaining the competencies, something like a program is a better alternative. Now, usually programs, again, are going to be a little bit more expensive than just a course. Why? Because there's continuity to it. You continue to learn. There continues to be new content. You have ways of practicing. Sometimes there's coaching or mentoring that goes along with programs as well. So again, depending on what it is that you are looking for, do you want some discrete knowledge that you can get from a course, or do you want to actually go down a transformation path and actually practice and exercise those things? If you want the latter, then look for programs instead of just courses, okay? That's the fourth one. Now, the last one is, you know, again, as you're looking at the learning opportunities, one thing to look at is the expertise of the person who is actually doing the course or doing the program. And again, I will tell you, it's just like everything. You get what you pay for, right? And so people who are more experienced, people who know more, people who, who are, are trained and, and have proven results in being able to help people, they're going to earn more than people who are just starting out or people who don't know what they're talking about because they're still learning too, okay? So again, if, if you have a choice, let's say, there's you know, the XYZ course, pick whatever topic you want. And you have, and you look at the information and you see that the one person seems like they're kind of new in what they're doing. Uh, they don't have a lot of experience. They haven't helped a lot of people. And, and that's one price, which is probably going to be lower versus somebody else who maybe has decades of experience doing this. Maybe that person has written books. 
Maybe they've, you know, toured all over the world. You've seen them on YouTube, right? Other things like that, where you know that that person is actually an expert. So the more expertise someone has, usually the more they can help you, right? And because of that, you can usually get transformation quicker. You'll learn more, you'll learn things that, that normal people don't know as well. And so again, looking at the expertise of the person uh, will also help you to determine the value of that learning opportunity as well, okay? So um, as I said, you know, at the beginning of this, the old looking at, at a learning opportunity and dividing the number of hours by the cost and saying, oh, that's too expensive, or, you know, that sounds good to me, or only relying on free is not really the way to go. In fact, I will tell you, um, I've invested in courses myself, where if you were to just do that math, you would be shocked because it's hundreds or thousands of dollars per hour. And again, you might say, hold it, that's not worth it. Well, go back to number one that we talked about to begin with, looking at and treating it as an investment. And I will tell you, when I have invested in very expensive programs, I have gotten you know, very, very helpful results to the point to where sometimes I get a 10x return on my money. So, you know, again, don't look at it just because of the price. Consider things like, you know, take it, determine if, you know, like, like you would any other investment. Consider whether this is a good rent or buy option for you. You know, look at the value that you're actually going to receive not just from, from the course of the training itself, but the value, again, the underlying value that you have in things, right? Um, and again, we talked about the, the organic versus, you know, hormone raised beef. Um, if, if you value the organic, then pay for the organic, if you will, okay? Uh, we talked about the course versus a program, what the differences are there as well. Uh, and again, because ultimately, even if it's a course, you're not going to develop the competencies until you start practicing and put it into place. Programs actually help walk you through that. Courses, you're left on your own to do it by yourself. And then the last one, again, just to consider the expertise of the person who's providing the learning opportunity to know whether it's somebody who's been around the block a few times that actually knows what they're talking about, or if you're jumping into something with somebody who doesn't know much more than you do about it um, as you're going through. So with that, I hope that's helpful because again, it's um, I'm very passionate about this. It's why I do what I do because I will tell you, you know, we're, we're a lot of us are very conscious about what we choose to eat or not eat, what we put into our physical bodies that give us energy and fuel ourselves. And it's good, we should, we should be doing that. And a lot of people do think about that. What a lot of people don't think about is what they're actually putting into their brain. And so again, garbage in, garbage out. And so if you're feeding your brain with garbage, then you're gonna get garbage results. If you feed it better, <laughs> better food, if you will, through, through better learning opportunities, you're going to get better results as well. Okay. And so again, just to kind of close out the whole thing, you know, I, I'm guessing that you're not one of those people if you're listening to this podcast, but if you are one of those people that only feels like you should get free training and training should be free for everybody, is that how you would get your food as well? Because again, most of the places where you can get, you can get free food, right? But most of the time it's like going to the grocery store, picking out the samples or it's digging through the trash can for things that people have left over. I don't think that's how you would want to feed your body. So you might not want to feed your mind that way either. So with that, my friends, lots of love. And, uh, you know, because again, as I said, my I, I'm passionate about this because I want you to invest in yourself. I want you to, to be able to have the best life and career that you can have. And honestly, the, one of the best ways to do that is for you to invest in yourself because it opens up 
opportunities for you to earn more money, to provide better for your family, and to honestly have a lot less stress as well um, as you go through that. So with that, my friends, I'm going to sign off for this week, but I'll catch you on a future episode of Jamming with Jason. Have a great week. And that's a wrap. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Jamming with Jason. Keep on rocking in the audit world. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share with your friends and leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Connect with me on LinkedIn and let me know what you enjoyed the most about the podcast and you may even be featured on a future episode. When you're ready to turbocharge your leadership development, join the Briefing Leadership Program where you get access to everything in one place and can interact directly with me in the group. If you'd like to earn continuing professional education for listening to today's episode, head on over to C-Risk Academy's video on-demand learning platform at ondemand.criskacademy.com. Not only do you get a CPE certificate, but you will also have access to hundreds of video on-demand learning opportunities. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are that of the individuals and not of their respective organizations.